Oh yeah, we're back. You know, we are so close to being finished now. Um, and so I wanted to show you all of this and, and, and then that way we'll have an opportunity or you'll be prepared to test your wine from start to finish. Now, there is a lot more science behind winemaking than we could possibly fit in several videos. But uh, this is probably the most important, just the basics of getting it right um, and allowing you to have certain data points to know where you're at and what you can expect on the on the end. Okay, uh, oh yeah, this is still in the way. I, I keep putting this out just as a demonstration because I keep saying, you know, if you may or may not be involved in the distilling industry somewhere around your neighborhood, uh, it doesn't turn to vinegar. This is, I've, this is like a month old. Um, it's, been, it's been finished for at least a month and it just sits here. It just, that's all it does. It's, you know, it's its own preservative. So I'm gonna put that on aside. We did a whole video on that. So, uh, you know, go back and check it out. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we've got to find an acetobacter bacteria in order to put in there, in order for that to turn to a vinegar. And it, then it's gonna take like six weeks for that to happen. So please folks, don't worry. If you got one and you finished it, put it aside and leave it at room temperature. It'll, it'll be fine, it, you'll get to it. Okay, look at this. Remember we did, we did this as well. Uh, this is for our pH meter. I've got the wine that I took out and I used a little uh, stopper on the side of the uh, fast ferment that we, you know, remember we drilled a hole in, we put that stopper on the outside. It's a, um, oh, it'll come to me in a minute, it's a spout. Uh, so we can pull wine off and test it. It's, a, it's great to use it for that. So I got two small glasses filled up. So that's the wine that we're going to test. But remember, we, we made this up, and this is something else that will last forever. I mean, uh, it comes with, the, uh, with your pH meter, and we've got pH 1.8, uh, uh, 4.0, and 8.6. Uh, and what this is, is a mixture of distilled water and the chemicals that, that comes with your meter. And I just made the three jars, and every time I need to recalibrate my uh, pH meter, I just open the jar and stick it in there and read it, and, and just make sure that this reading and this reading are the same, because we know what this is. We just want this to read that. And then I'll go to the next jar, and then go to the next jar, just to make sure that it's all rounded out. And, and so this pH meter is working. So let me set that aside. The way this pH meter works, uh, it's real simple. It's just take the cover off and turn it on, and I've got a digital readout. Now, in a red wine, our, our, goal, our goal is to have a pH of anywhere from 3.2 to like 3.65, somewhere in that neighborhood. It, it, so that's, remember that in, in that pH scale as well, it goes from 1 to 14, and 7 is absolutely neutral. So. We're going to go into, I'm going to stick this in here, and my pH level is, I'm waiting on it, it's there it is, okay, I'm at 3.5, so I'm well within the range, anywhere from 3.2, 3.65, I'm, oh, 3.4, okay, good, I'm, I'm well within the range, I'm right there in the middle, so I'm happy with that, so we do know what the pH is. Oops, I'm, I'm gonna go clean this off. I'll be make right sure back. you keep this thing clean. I just went out and rinsed it off. Uh, and make sure you just use distilled water. You can dip it in and, and swish it. Uh, as a matter of fact, distilled water should read seven, neutral. Uh, I'm gonna put this on the screen for you so you can see this as well. But this is a, a copy of, oops, of the scale for pH. It starts at zero and works its way to 14. And 17 right here, or I'm sorry, seven being neutral, and this is pure water or blood. Uh, and and, you, and you, so you'll notice here that you know the lower the number goes, the more acidic it is, and then the higher the number goes, it's the more alkaline or or basic it is. And some comparisons are like battery acid is zero, very very acidic. Uh, you'll look here, you've got vinegar and uh, like lemon juice is at a two. Now, our wine is going to wind up here, anywhere here from a three to a, a, a four, somewhere in that neighborhood. So this is, uh, looks like in grapefruit and orange juice. Uh, then it goes up to tomato juice and beer. And then acid rain, 7-Up soda. So it's, it's got a lot of things on here that will tell you 
and you can see that on the screen. You can see what, what different items are on the pH scale. So, so now we've measured the pH. We've, uh, we've also uh, got the uh, specific gravity, 1.065. So we know that we're going to have about a 9% uh, a by alcohol, uh, alcohol by volume wine, uh, if all goes well. Now, here's what we got to do next. The, the next thing we got to do is we got to get, uh, we're going to use sodium hydroxide. Now, folks, this, and as I start to describe these, please be very, very careful. This is a very, very caustic uh, substance. Um, uh, it is very, very dangerous. Keep it out of reach of children. Uh, don't do anything else with it other than what you see going on here, okay? So please, please be very, very careful. This is very caustic. Um, and then we've got the... Uh, Phenol, phenolphthalein. Uh, it's, it, it's another chemical. Be very, very careful with it. It's, uh, it, it's also very dangerous. But we're going to use this to test the acid level, the acidity in specific of the wine. Now, you can test white wines or you can test red wines. Uh, it's all about a color change that takes place. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 15 cc's or 15 ml's. Uh, it, both those scales are the same. Uh, there's... 10, there we go, and we're going to put it into our test beaker. There's 10, now let me get 5 more, because you need to start with 15, and the, uh, the, whole, the uh, whole issue is, uh, is that we're, it's all based by measures. There we go, so we've got that, and I'll set that aside, because now we're just going to be working with this much. What I need next is I need to be able to clean this thing off, and I haven't. Can you bear with me a second? There we go. Just a real quick spurt. Now, uh, so the phenolphthalein, what we need is we need three drops of this. So I'll carefully just get my eyedropper and go one, two, Three. All right, so we put three drops of that in. What we're doing is we're setting, we're setting the acid level. And it actually sets the acid level high. Uh, and what the intent is, is, see, now that we kind of know where that's at, what we're trying to do is we're going to neutralize it, and then we're going to use a mathematical formula to figure out what the acid level is of the wine itself. Now we already know what the pH level is, so we know if it's more acidic than it is alkaline. And right now we know that it's in the acidic range, but we don't want to know now how much of it's in the acidic range. Now remember the three acids in the wines, and again this is another long topic, is malic acid, uh, citric acid, and tartaric acid. Okay? So the tartaric acid gives it that tartness, uh, then your, your citric acid and your malic acid uh, act in combination to do a couple of other things. And part of it, it has to do with clarifying. The other part of it has to do with uh, a catalyst and assistance for fermentation and stabilization and clearing. Um, it, what we don't want to have is we don't want to have too much tartaric acid because then we have that. You notice how some of your wines have those little crystals that fall at the bottom? It's normal. It's, it's called a tartrate fallout. Uh, and it's natural. It happens there, there's a couple of things you can do, but for home, for winemakers, the, the best thing to do is to kind of cold crash it, let it chill, and once all those fall out, is bottle it from there, siphon it off and bottle it. But we'll get to that in another topic. All right, so here we are. We've got 15 cc's, 15 milliliters or cc's <coughs> of, uh, of our wine, and that's our wine must. And this is before we add any yeast to it at all. We're not, we haven't done anything but mix it. We already know what the gravity is, 1.065, and we already know what the pH is, which is 3.4. Uh, we've got, so 15 cc's, we've got three drops of phenolphthalein, and now we're going to take the sodium hydroxide. Now, this is the real dangerous stuff, the most dangerous stuff that you're going to use here. And we're going to suck up 10 cc's. And the reason we're going to take up 10 is because we're going to introduce this one cc at a time. Now, 
What you do is one cc at a time, we will add this back into the wine, and now red wine will turn gray, uh, a white wine will turn a purplish pink, uh, and then when you shake it, it'll disappear. And then you continue to add one cc at a time until the color remains permanent. Now what I mean by that is, this is a, a red wine, so we're, we're working with gray. Uh, it's easier to describe if it's a white wine. If this is a white wine sitting in another glass next to it, when I add the first cc, you'll notice it'll turn pink. And then I'll shake it, it'll disappear. I'll add another cc, it'll turn pink. I'll shake it, it'll disappear. So, something sort of like that starch test we do. At some point, I'm going to add a cc and shake it, and it won't change. It'll stay pink. We know that we've just neutralized all the acid. That's how it works. And the same thing with this red. So let's get working on it. Okay, let's do our first CC. There it is. We shake it. And any of that gray has gone away. Another CC. And I'll shake it. And that's gone away. Looks like she's getting close though. One more CC. We're down to seven. Or we added three. And that's. Yo, yep, that's gone away. Okay, one more. And I'm doing this just by the scale that's on the side of this syringe. And this time, I'll shake it. And you'll notice that, and it's really hard to discern here, as I know on the video, but you can, you can see that the dark, it's, it's remained a dark gray. So that's a dark gray color. And what we did was we put four cc's into that. So the four cc's means that my acidity level I could probably go with one more. That's just very, very slight. Let's do one more. Oh yeah, most definite. Okay, with the five cc's, that means it's 50%. So four cc's would have been 40%. Now there's a, there's a general rule um, for these wines and, ah, uh, that's good. Uh, a fruit wine is 40 to 60 percent. Uh, 70 percent uh, is for a really stout. Let me look here. I've got a list of, yep, sherries are 50 percent. Uh, white grape wines are about 70 to 75. Reds, uh, fruit wines are 60, 50, 60. Um, and then red grapes uh, would be about 70 percent. So that gives us a really, really good indicator. Now, while we're here, let's do a white wine so we can give you another example. Of, this is the red that we've already done. So we'll do a white wine real quick. Let me close this up because of the dangers of that stuff. And I'll clean this off and we'll get this thing set right back up. We'll do it again. <laughs> All right, I was smart enough this time to bring back a little bit of water that I could use to rinse things out and I don't have to jump out all the time. Okay. Okay, this is our white wine. Now you can test the wine after it's already fermented as well. It'll give you, it'll tell you what the acidity is of it. Of it is, it will tell you. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, remember we started off with 15 milliliters, mLs or cc's. There's 10 of them, and we get five more. There we go. Five more. All right. Set that aside. Get to clean that out. Now, remember we used three drops of phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein. That's not an easy one to pronounce. All right, we only need three drops. Here we go. One, two, and three. You know, at the rate that I use this stuff, it's going to last quite a while. I've had folks ask me, well, how, you know, it's, it, it is shelf stable, so I'd use it, you know, within a year or so, but uh, 
it, it's going to last you quite a while because you're only using very little. What you use the most of is your sodium hydroxide. And again, please be very, very careful. All right, now we're going to take 10 cc's of this stuff because we want to know we may not use it all, and if we don't, we'll just put it back. There we go. So we got 10 cc's of it. Very caustic, very dangerous. Oh, all right. I keep saying that. All right, let's do the first. Now remember, we're, gonna, we're looking for a color change. Here goes the first cc. If I know you can see that, you, it, it, can it turns a little purple, pink. Then we shake it, and that dissipates. All right, that's one. Let's do that again. There's the next one. You'll see how it turns a color. So it turned purple again. That was two. You shake it, it dissipates, and it turns back into a clear liquid. Let me see if I can do this real close. Uh, let's do three. The third one. Yeah, you can see it changing. And then we shake it. So, uh huh. Okay, yep, it disappears. There goes the fourth one. That disappears. There goes the fifth one. Uh oh. You notice it has stayed. It's permanent. It's a permanent color now. It's not, it won't change. Okay. Oh, though it's just starting to slightly. Oh, we can get a little bit more. Oh, we get a bit more precise. Fifth one. So it's the sixth one. There we go. So that means that this one is 60% acidic. Now, isn't that just neat? <laughs> um, no longer will you have those questions. Um, and then when you can talk to other folks and you're talking about the acidity of wine and uh, you'll sound smart and you'll know, you will be, you'll know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, if you have issues with your wines, uh, here's the question. Is it the acidity of the wine? Uh, it, are, are the challenges you're having the pH level of the wine? Is it too high? Is it too low? Um, Excuse me. Um, what about the gravity? So we take all three of those data points and put them together, and that tells us now that in this particular case, my anticipation at the very end is I'm going to have a really nice, and I'm going to stop now. I might back sweeten a little bit, make this a really nice sweet wine, about a nine percent. Uh, it's not going to be real tartic or tart, so it doesn't have a whole lot of tartric acid in it. Uh, it's got a pretty good balance of malic and uh, citric acid. Uh, therefore, you can, if necessary, to change this, we have an acid blend. And the acid blend is developed, it's a, it's, it's a combination of those three acids uh, in combination in the most normally used proportions, uh, which is higher mal uh, tartric, a little bit less malic, and then uh, the citric. And you could start to introduce that in order to adjust that, either the pH level or you could also adjust the acidic level uh, in your wines. So. That, that's just, just touch so much fun. Send us a, a, a message. Give us a call. Uh, you, you got our phone number. Uh, share us with your friends. Like us on Facebook. Do all those great and wonderful things. Uh, we love nothing more than to serve our community, and we're here to answer your questions as best we possibly can. Please be patient with us. We are patient with everybody. We love what we do, and we enjoy this. Please be safe, and as always, happy brewing.